I've tested a bookbinding kit from Amazon, Lineco, but I have not tested one from Etsy. And if you didn't know, there are actually a lot of Etsy shops that make bookbinding kits. I found one of Etsy's top picks from a shop called Clever Hands, and it seems like a good kit. I was able to choose the color of my book cloth. I went with this blue along with the end paper designs, and I went with this marbly texture. I wanted to try case binding because I haven't done it in a while. I feel kind of rusty, so this will be a good refresher. Also, I've never done it the traditional way with tapes before, so it should be interesting to see how easy it is to follow. Personally, I think case binding is kind of a challenge. Here's how the box arrived, and it includes materials and tools to make a 4x6 cased in journal. Some of the stuff inside got shifted around during the shipping process, that's okay. I do like that everything is labeled. The blue book cloth I chose looks a little bit darker in person. We've got a little bottle of PVA glue, waxed linen thread, and a binding needle. The cutest little bone folder I've ever seen. An awl and a foam brush two binder clips with cardstock pieces. Then we have a punching guide, some mall fabric, three twill tapes, and a book board spine strip spacing guide, a little booklet of complete binding instructions, two book boards, and one of them caught the edge of the binding clip, but it will still work fine, 36 sheets of paper, and then the two marble sheets that I picked out for the end papers. It's nice that the instructions include terms in case you're a total beginner and you don't know what a book block is or a signature, along with some general tips for advice. Okay, I'm going to follow the instructions, starting with sectioning out the sheets of paper. The paper does feel like a good quality. They recommend folding the group of pages together and creasing from the center to the outside and putting some weight on top to relax the folds. I made a light pencil line on the spine to tell which end of the signature is the top, then folded the punching guide in half so I can use it in the valley of the signature, keeping it in place with the binding clips, and it's nice that they included the cardstock so it doesn't dent the paper. They suggest to pierce through on top of an old phone book. I don't have one at the moment, but I have tried that in a previous video. I also explore cradles and other ways in this video if you want to check it out but I'm going to go at it the very basic way, which is just piercing through on top of a cutting mat. This awl feels like a smaller version of my heavy duty awl that I usually use, and it's nice to see something similar in a kit because I think this style is easier to grip. After all signatures are pierced, it's time for the sewing portion. The thread is pre-cut along with everything else in the kit, so there's no worry about measuring or cutting the right sizes. Sewing on tapes will be a new experience for me, so I'm glad that there's instructions with diagrams. The visuals were really helpful. This method is more of a traditional way of binding a text block together with kettle stitches on the ends and sewing over the tapes. And I found the instructions really easy to follow. Now I'm stacking all of the signatures together, making sure everything is flush and straight and putting the text block on the edge of a table, pulling the tapes so they aren't bunched behind the threads. Now on to the glue. It didn't say what to apply the glue with, but I assume it meant the foam brush. So I put the glue on this way, and then when I used the foam brush, it kind of soaked in the glue, so there wasn't a lot left on the text block. So I reapplied it and then just used my finger because it just seemed like it was getting on better that way. The instructions say to allow the glue to become tacky and then glue the mull centered on the spine and tamp the glue into the fibers of the mull with the foam brush. It also says the mull should not make contact with the spine folds of the signature, like not wrap around to stick to the sides. And I found that kind of hard to do because if it wasn't doing that, it wasn't sticking. Honestly, I'm not sure if I did this the proper way, but I'm just going to let it dry and move on. If you want the book to have a curved spine, it recommends to wrap the spine piece around a pencil. Now onto the spine spacing guide, which is already pre-measured for me, and I just need to glue the boards within those guidelines. If you're a beginner, the space between all of these pieces is the hinge width, so that gap is for the hinges, which help your book open and close. 
Then I'm gluing the ends over to the other side so it's all one cover piece. Next step is to cover the whole thing with wax paper under a weight and let it dry, which didn't take that long. Now for the book cloth, this fabric is already backed with paper, so no need to prep it or anything. It should glue really well to the board. Following the instructions, tracing the cover to the back side of the book cloth so there's a guide, and then four millimeters away from the tip of the corner, making that mark to cut off the corners. Now to glue this to the board, I chose to use my own glue brush this time because I just don't really like this foam brush for gluing. It soaks up way too much of the glue and then it dries faster, which is a little bit difficult for PVA glue since it already dries quickly. So yeah, just using my own glue brush. And I gave a tip to rub the book cloth through clean scrap paper to avoid bruising on the surface of the cloth. Now onto folding over the margins of the book cloth on the other side, doing the long sides first and then starting from the center using a pinching motion and pushing in the corners of the book cloth. At this point, it's said to recurve the spine if you chose to do a curved spine, but it was kind of already dried flat, so I just kind of left it in a halfway curved spine and wrapped the whole thing in wax paper under weight to let it dry. Now for the most stressful part of any case-bound project, attaching the cover. I'm dry fitting the book block with the cover to check all the margins, squaring the book block, putting my scrap paper in, and making sure the whole book block doesn't move while I apply glue. Which was kind of hard to do this way because applying glue just makes the whole thing move. It, I don't know what the solution for that is, uh, but I just re-squared it as I worked and applied glue to the bottom and top of the mull and the tapes. Then it says to lift the left half of the cover up and tip it onto the glued up page in a smooth motion, press it down and rub. Then to flip the cover onto something as thick as the book block to support the cover while you work. My cover wasn't turning over very easily and I noticed my end page was wonky and not aligned so in a panic, I just ripped off the paper, hoping that it didn't destroy it very much. I added more glue and then quickly, before it dried, tried to redo it. No going back now, but I did notice my end paper was sticking out on the edge, so I trimmed it to hide that it wasn't aligned and then glued on the marbled end paper on top of that. Then adding wax paper in between that, flipping the book over to repeat that on the other side, but this side was much easier to do. Then wrapping the whole thing in wax paper and putting a weight on top of it to let it dry overnight. Honestly, after my little glue mishap, I was expecting the book to not open easily, but it did. It was like I didn't even have any issues. I did have some glue spots that I forgot to wipe on the book cloth, but other than that, it felt like a normal book. I like the quality of end papers and the quality of the book cloth. Really, all of the tools and materials were good quality. I just didn't prefer the sponge brush for gluing. This didn't include trimming of the foredge, so the book block isn't smooth, which doesn't really bother me. This is a different style of case binding than I'm used to, but I still learned from it. I think this kit could work for all skill levels and you can find the link to it in the description below along with all the other stuff I mentioned in this video. A big thanks to my patrons and members for supporting my channel. Hit that like button and subscribe. Tap the bell so you don't miss any of my videos and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.